Hello and welcome to another demonstration. Today I'm going to have a little bit of fun with the Posca pens. Now if you've not heard of Posca pens, these are paint pens. So they have a water-based ink and they literally can go on anything. They are so opaque they can go over mistakes and with this I'm going to use quite a painterly effect and you'll see that I will paint over and keep painting over until I get the colours I want. They water-based which means while they're wet I can move them with water. Once they dry they're permanent so you have a short window. Lots of different nibs so there's a bigger nib there right up to a really tiny one and then there was a big chisel which I'm not using. This one hasn't been primed so in order to prime them you need to shake and you can hear the ball inside that's activating the pigment inside because it will settle and you need to gently and take a little bit of time you need to just depress the nib a few times oh that's coming down quite quickly Okay, can you see that? And then you get this lovely wet painterly effect. Okay, so keep remember to shake and put the lid back on because you don't want it to go anywhere everywhere. Also, with these, I'll just find one. Here's one. You can actually take out the nibs. And on some of them, you can just turn the nib around and reuse them that way. You take the nibs out and clean them. And like I say, plenty of different nibs and colours in the range. So I'm going to be painting on wooden palette because it's a bit of fun. I have sketched it out in pencil to start with, but I may move some of the flowers. Um, the main reason I've sketched it out is so I get it straight and I can get as much in as possible because of the different shapes on the palette. So I haven't got the colours that I need in the gerberas or these chrysanthemums. I just don't have those colours. So I'm going to work with the colours I have and, and keep blending until I do get a colour. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to reposition this because I've I want it at a slightly different angle and I'm just going to sketch out. I've got the original in front of me so I can look at the shape, look at the petal but I'm not being slavish to every petal. I'm looking at the shape more than anything. The same with this one, I think that is kind of looking that way. Just plotting it down for now. I know these pens and that they will work and I'm able to blend and move and cover and alter really readily. Okay. Right, white. No, not white, yeah, I think I go red, red. So it's, it, these are kind of this dark pinky red. And mix the colours and I'm mixing the colours while they're wet and I found on this palette because it is a non-porous surface the ink stays wetter for longer therefore I am able to blend much more readily again it looks a bit sketchy a bit scrappy at the moment on a non-porous, on a porous surface, sorry, like paper, the ink goes in quite quickly, so you have a, a much shorter window to be able to move the colours around. So you try out different surfaces. Like I say, that's the beauty of these. They will go on the different surfaces. It's just smaller as it's facing that way. Very sketchy. Longer petals there. Okay, back in with the pink. Just to 
show you, you can go back over. A little bit more care about the shaping now. I will start painting and a lot of things look at a very scruffy, scrappy stage. That once you've learnt your medium, I'm confident with this pen. You can see here that I can go back over. I can actually, once it's dry, to be honest, scrape back. I want these petals maybe a bit longer, just so it's not very centered there. And same, let's go around here. So you can do it very flat. You'll see the color when I was priming the blue was very flat. You can get a very flat color. But I'm taking advantage of the medium, the support I'm using. This palette has a varnish on it. Um, it's not overly shiny, but it's just meaning that the paint is sitting on the surface, which is perfect for what I want to do. Orange, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow, I don't know, but I can see they're coming up really nicely already. And when I try the different techniques, you kind of thinking, oh, I like that. Cause I'm just thinking when I'm dotting, um, I like that. And I can imagine doing something else with the dot technique. Now, when you mix in the colors like this, you will get your colors contaminated. And I'll show you that it will happen more readily with the white. Put the black in while I can think about it. Just top that in. Look how wet the colours is colours are. Just dotting them in. Um while that's drying, I think I'll just go on to a lot of this is going to be quite quick. And it's more a case of sketching down and deciding where your colours are. So I have sketched it down, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to move some of the shapes. Just to fit in this shape I have on the of the palette. It's quite yellowy, but and then there's lovely white flowers that come down here, but they have a green leaf shape there. Again, this isn't going to be the finished green. This is just me thinking about colour and placement of shape. That's really placement of the shape. And it's not going to be every single shape. Might come back to that in a minute. I've got more green coming out here, so I might put that on while I'm thinking of it. Just reminds me that I will need to do some shaping over here. So I'm using the original picture as a reference, but I'm not slavish to it. I'm moving things around just to fit in this space. Right, these chrysanthemums are quite, it's a lovely colour. What colour is that? Oh, beige. Again, that same technique, putting shapes on. So the chrysanthemum has much longer, thinner leaves. Yes, it's that pink shape, colour, but I'm going to do the same technique as I did there in order to build up the colour. I do need to just see where... The leaves are, and if I can create that lovely shape, 
And there's another one here. So I'm using the original as reference. A bit sketchy at the moment, but I will go back in and build up the sh shapes that I want. So there's two or three flowers here, much smaller petals in the middle, moving out to bigger petals as it goes around in that oval shape. Okay, and there's another little one here, but that's going to be quite dark. Right. Well, that's on there, in with the pink. So you'll also see I'm using quite big um, pens. It's getting quite a lot of colour down quite quickly. Little shapes there, radiating out. See how wet that still is, which is really nice. It means I can keep blending that colour to get the colour I'm looking for. So some it's very much like some wet paint on the surface of wet acrylic. Some lovely shapes there. Naturally this will be contaminated a little bit, you can see there be a little lighter and while I've got that slight contamination on my bro on my nib I'm going to use it over here another way I can do that is purposely contaminate the nib drop some color on and mix it on the paper so now I've got a slightly lighter but pinker colour. It doesn't last long, but it will last enough. That I'm able to add some more details. So a much lighter pink and sometimes you'll see that it's half and half in the line which is nice. So what I'm trying to do is show you how painterly these pens can be. Try and show you some techniques you may not have thought about. And if if you don't have any other colours in your range, white is a really useful colour to have. It just you can add your highlights. It's that opaque white you're looking for in some of your paintings. Okay. So let me just decontaminate. There we go decontaminated that pink. I um, think I need the white prime. So again, another layer of colour. Still wet underneath. Thinking about the shape, so these petals come up and then there's a few that are coming out, but they're quite short. Little ones here. And some nice big shapes.
getting close to that pink I'm looking for. Little shapes in the middle, which is a big shape from this. So that's getting contaminated. So I want to just a cleaner line. There you go. This is just another layer. It doesn't mean it's finished. I can still see a few more layers required. Okay, while well that's drying, I will go in with this rose right in the middle. This may be a little flatter, partly because I want to show you how lovely and flat this colour will go on also just to add a different texture um to pink while well, it's wet so this is a much finer pen and this will blend much more subtly um Might add a little bit of orange. Okay. Right. I'm going to now start to use this much finer pen. Which needs priming. Go around. Still a little wet, so that's why I'm I'm not going to outline every shape. I'm going to suggest it. And this is where this flower suddenly comes to life. You can just suggest the shape of the petals a little bit more. Like I say, I'm not going around every, I'm just catching the edges showing the slightly smaller petals right in the middle. I think it's still a little... Oops, that's why you keep your lid on when you shake. I, think I do need a little bit more light in the middle here. A bit more colour. So like I say, what I'm trying to do is really show you just a different kind of technique, much more painterly, much more considered. So you see big pens with big nibs. You don't always think about how they can be used. Okay. Red. Let's bring out some of these shapes. I do find with these finer ones, they clog up a little quicker. Okay. And I think the paint's probably still a little bit wet. It's not had time to cure and dry. So it's pushing the paint around. But So what I'm looking for is a painterly effect. A little bit sketchy, but okay, I think that's working. Just probably needs a little bit more pink again. A tiny little. I know this is still a little bit wet.
them. I can just bring out these shapes and define this a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to move on to the leaves. While that's still wet, all it's doing is scraping. So leaves, I haven't got the colour I want. Again, these are quite artificial greens. But using the same technique in the, as we did in the flowers, that's actually already contaminated, I've used that. I can mix a green that I'm looking for. Um, these are quite nice yellow greens down here. And this is a it bud. It's quite yellow. And there's a very yellow bud there. Got an edge. I've got one green there, one yellow there, and I've got two other greens. So this is the darker green. I'm going to mix the colours as they're wet. And if I've gone too far, which possibly will do, not a problem, I can bring it back. I can go back over and recolour. Or I found that actually on this I can scrape back. I will show you that if I have an area that's dry enough. I've lost that lovely leaf there, but I'll bring it back just over there. Okay. There's quite a lot of green in the background there. And then there's a big leaf that's come there. Some lovely shapes. Let me put this white on so I can also see where the white goes. These are, I don't know what flower these are. They're quite delicate. Again, just put shape on. Look how opaque the white is. Go back there. I think they're kind of like a bell shape. Here's a lovely the leaves are quite raggedy at the end. I could do that, suggest that by just using the um pen to be a little bit more sketchy. Okay. What else? Ah, this is white, so white jug. What I need to be careful is keeping it straight. Let's put the white on. I'm going around the colours. Sometimes you don't need to. Again, it totally depends on the surface. Um, if it's dry enough, you can go over. But the surface isn't drying quickly. So I might need to move that up a little bit. Okay. 
decontaminate my white for now. And go in with the grey. Grey under here. Grey into the white. So that's going to mix. Lose that. This is where I'm just altering the jug a little bit. It's gone a little green at the moment, but that's not a problem. I can completely alter that. with the white reshape the handle so. Oops. contamination but it doesn't matter it, I'm just really confident that I can cover any areas which I'm not happy with back in again mix that. The, the white will be right at the end. I will let it all dry and then for the clean white, while I've got this, I can see lots of leaf, a little bit of these white flowers is over here. So how does it balance out? Yes, I need a little bit of colour just there. So letting that dry and actually hopefully while that's dry I can now come up and pick out some of these shapes with this white. Look at that, that's making that really ping. Bigger, smaller, little shapes. A much bigger shape, so let's add some flower petals out and around. So, all the time I'm thinking about the shape of the flower can it be altered? And yes, it can. It's Look at all those beautiful colours you've got in there the pink and the beige. Now the white. Right, I think I need a little bit of pink again. You don't have to be as fussy as I'm being. This is just me trying to push the pens and see how much they will do for me. Another thing you can do is put some colour on the palette and with a brush you can blend. So if you do want it to be much more painterly you can actually mix your colour so like a paint because it is so wet you can actually use it like a paint. What I'm trying to do is just push the pens as a pen get that I don't want to hide the fact that I've used pen because what you're doing is you can do it all very painterly and then you're not seeing the medium you've used I want to show that actually this has been done with a pen as well as with rather than with a brush so just showing you how you can blend like that right this is some red so I just need to pick out shake with the lid on you will learn after a few goes that that's what you need to do I 
think it's still too wet, so right. go around into these. Now that's definitely working a lot easier. Now it's dried. Right. Mix them. Okay, so this one needs a bit of colour from both. It's probably going to be the lightest leaf because it's the one that's standing out. It's not in the shade in the background. That's much nicer. Okay. Same with this. This is more yellow, so let's use that yellow base. This yellow's actually nicely contaminated with the green from a previous. Those greens are coming together. Um, darker there. This will have a little bit of shape along there. Okay. Also, got to think about depth. So inside is going to get darker as well leaf there this is quite yellow there are some leaves coming over i can't see fully into the middle of the flowers so i'm going to put some darks Just a little bit because I know how strong this blue is. And then mix it with the green. Just so it's not a flat dark colour. Like I've said I'm looking for a painterly effect. To reshape those leaves. And it's also given me another colour. I probably need a bit of blue here. Just dropping the colour on a little bit. Put some dark there, that will push this leaf forward. Okay. using the colour that's already on the surface and pick up and place it elsewhere. Now I can reshape those, pick up that a little bit and you can see how that's now pushed that leaf forward. Add a little bit more value so it's not just glaringly sitting there okay. again with this probably need to do the same drop a blue only a drop because I know how far that moves so that's made an, another green dark in here 
these are quite dark, so a bit of blue. that down okay so this needs green leaf and putting into the flower arrangement and there's some lovely shapes coming out of here that's lovely and it goes off the palette because it's bigger than the um, image I've got. So things will go up. So these are lovely. These throng throngs, don't know, ferns, I think. And they've got a nice shape so looking at things that are giving me nice shape and you know when you do a flower arrangement you also are looking for structure and shape these have to go off the side some leaves there um and put some more i think i'll do one here it's really made that longer again with another green so it's not just one green gently just scratching and catching the edge of the nib I think I could do with another one there then I want to do what's this gypsy something like that. I do know the name of this, I just can't bring it to mind. These are fun, fun ones to do, look. Just dot in little bundles. Gypsophilia, told you it would come to me. I think I might low down then with black light While I've got this black, I'm going to just add another dimension to the leaves and very sketchily. I don't want to make them solid. Definitely bring those back to life. And not only with the black, I'm going to do white as well, so it's kind of a mix of both. some shape barely touching the surface
the red still. So many layers it can be achieved just manipulating the colour. I've gone too far in with the black, I'll just take it back. Right, so the same here, but again, very. Smaller petals there, bigger ones, and these fully unfolded ones here. Again, looking at shape and balance. I think I need a little bit more red in this. Decontaminate. the pink. Too red there but I think it's a bit too white as well. to see all the different marks. So that mix of the black, the white, the pink. It's a little better. Need a bit more colour. Can pick up some edges for these. strong with the white so we can go back in. Right, let's bring out this rose. Just trying to define some more shape. Now this area, I haven't forgotten about it, it's just quite dark. And I want to add a little bit more depth here. Where's my white? Do I need any white on here? Possibly just a little bit on the edge. Right. This 
white needs some bluing, I think. So I'm going to just drop some colour in the palette and then I can use this blue just to wash over. And into here. So this is going to be a mix of the white again. Get it there. There we go. Don't mind a little bit of pink in there. It's all part of the tie-in with the colour scheme. Under here. So if you're happier using a brush. use it as a paint. Okay, white. Bit of blue on here. This needs some shadow. And all. Bit of grey. A little bit of the white, just there, so it's not quite as flat. Back. Okay, put my lids back on. And let's finish. Put the stems on and there's not they're not going anywhere so a few dots and got a couple more leaves to finish then just a few details and we're done a nice shape. Back in with some yellow. Make that a bit more pointily. Bring that round so you just see how sometimes just a little mark, an extra detail can either distract de detract from it but often looks at that scruffy stage and then it explains a little bit more about what's going on blending with the green work my way around now with the black pen just to see if there's any areas that need highlighting this is probably going to nope it's nearly dry it's dry enough that back. Oh, 
I haven't finished that one off yet. So, red. Push this back. And touch of white. back Just working my way around to a few final details. White, that's what I'm looking for. It's going to be quite pink because I've just used it with the pink. Like I say, if you don't want to contaminate your pen, just drop it onto a palette and work from there. balance so I hope you can see that you can actually keep altering nearly done so this needs seating it's at the moment floating in midair I'm just going to ground it by putting on shadow now this is quite difficult because it wants to be straight oops I think that's fairly straight because it's wet I'll need to just put the edge on there how lovely and painterly you can get this. A lot of it, very scruffy to start with, but you can just keep, you know when you like to keep working on an area and you work on it and you need to alter it. This is why these are so fun especially on this different surface. Right. Carefully put the white on. Again, just so I have a clean shape here. That's fine. Okay. Looking at that, there are probably areas I'd like to to work on but I'm not going to because I think that's come along quite well so what I did say is that they it scratches off so here I've leaned on it so I can actually scratch off see there I can take away and scratch off the color here which means I need to varnish this now I did try using a brush varnish 
but I found that the black smudged. So a spray varnish will not only protect and fix the colours, but also makes the colours ping a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching. Join me again soon for another demonstration.